Hi, Hugo Reed. We are kicking off African American Black History Month of February with the book Tuskegee Airmen's Story. You can tell this happened a while ago. This is kind of a, from history. It's not a current story. If I open this up, you can see the entire airplane. You see some soldiers down here. This was written by Lynn Homan and D Thomas Riley, and it's illustrated by Rosalie Shepard. So let's see what we can learn about Tuskegee Airmen. Now this is a picture book. We do have a couple chapter books in the library about this, if this is something you would like to read more. I was lucky enough to meet a Tuskegee Airman, oh my goodness, a long time ago. And it really made me want to learn more about Tuskegee Airmen at the time. So I think Tuskegee Airmen are an interesting part of the history of the United States. Here they are. Do you notice their planes? Later you'll hear they were called, their squad was called the Red Tails. Do you see how they have red tails on the end of their planes here? The Tuskegee Airmen story. Here are some people looking. Let's see what they're doing. It looks like they're looking at an old jacket from the military. What are you kids doing, Grandma asked. We're just playing with this really neat stuff we found. What is all this? Oh, Joshua, Grandma answered. Those are all of Granddad's World War II things. His old uniform, his leather flight helmet, his medals. He was a real hero, you know, a Tuskegee Airman. Get him to tell you about it. There's Granddad. Granddad, Grandma said you were in a war and you were a Tuskegee Airman. What's a war? asked Joshua. And when was it? asked Krista. What's a Tuskegee Airman and how did you get to be one? asked their friend Charlene. Well, kids, Granddad asked, let's all sit down and I'll tell you about it. Well, that was a lot of questions, isn't it? You know how you and your sister sometimes fight with each other or how you sometimes get into arguments with your friends? Well, a war is a great big disagreement about an entire, between entire countries or whole groups of people. The war that I was in happened a long time ago, even before your mom and dad were born, Granddad added. Look, he has on his old granddad's jacket, doesn't he? Back when I was just 20 years old, America, England, and France were involved in a really bad dispute with Italy, Germany, and Japan. That fight lasted for several years and it was called World War II. Every American, young and old, wanted our country to win the war and tried to help in all kinds of ways. Some young men and women joined the Army, the Navy, the Coast Guard, or the Marines. Others, like me, joined what's now the Air Force, but it was called the Army Air Corps back then, Granddad continued. So it shows people trying to join the war effort. This is an old poster that I want you. This is supposed to be a character called Uncle Sam who represents the United States, and that was used to try to get people to join the military, the Army, the Air Force, the Navy. What did you do in the Air Corps, Granddad? Chris asked. Were you a pilot? Did you fly an airplane? Yes, honey, I did. Although for a long time, I didn't think I would be allowed. Even though I was already a licensed civilian pilot, the men in charge of the American military didn't believe that black people could do things like fly airplanes. Hmm, that's interesting, isn't it? He already had a license to fly an airplane. He knew how to fly an airplane, but at that time the military didn't think that black people should fly airplanes. But why not, Granddad? Well, Krista, that's how it was back then. African Americans were only allowed to do really common types of jobs in the military. In fact, the United States was a segregated company, country 
That meant that black people weren't allowed to go to certain places or do a lot of things that white people could do. We couldn't have the same jobs, drink out of the same water fountains, or even eat in the same restaurants. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? Doesn't that seem strange that different people couldn't have same jobs? They couldn't go in the same restaurants? You know what else they didn't do is they didn't go to the same schools. So that would be something that children would notice like you. If you lived during times that were segregated, you would only go to school with children who had the same color skin as you did. Wow, that would be a lot different than our school. I don't think that would be a good thing. Let's see what happens next. But you changed all that, right, Granddad? I mean, we can go anywhere and be anything we want now, said Joshua with a smile. Well, it took a long time, Joshua, and a lot of people to make it happen, but you're right. The Tuskegee Airmen proved that African Americans could fly airplanes and do lots of other jobs really well, and that helped to change things. Back in 1941, the Army Air Corps set up a special program at Tuskegee Army Airfield in Alabama to give African Americans a chance to fly in the military. Training was really hard. We had to learn about weather conditions, military procedures, how to read a map, all kinds of different things besides how to fly an airplane. A lot of guys who were good flyers washed out or eliminated, but some of us made it through and graduated. So they not only had to be good pilots, they had to know all those other things. A lot of people, they say, washed out, so they didn't make it. Just a few of them kept going. What about Grandma? Was she at Tuskegee? Asked Joshua. She sure was. Women like Grandma wanted to do their part to help with the war. They worked in jo lots of jobs. At Tuskegee, there were numerous nurses and parachute riggers. Some women worked in offices or as guards at the base. Several women worked on the airplane and in the flight tower at Morton Field, at Moton Field, where we first learned to fly. So they weren't letting women be pilots at this point, but they were doing lots of support jobs. Everybody was trying to do their part to win the war. Were all of the Tuskegee, were all of the Tuskegee Airmen pilots, asked Charlene. No way, Charlene. While some of us were learning to be military fighter pilots, other guys were being trained as mechanics or they were working in the office. Some men loaded weapons. Others kept the trucks running or made sure they were fed. We were fed. There were hundreds of different jobs and they were all important, said Granddad. They were running a whole military base. Lots of things to do. As soon as there were enough of us to fill three more fighter squadrons, we were sent to Europe to join the first group of Tuskegee Airmen, the 99th Fighter Squadron. Benjamin O. Davis was our commander. Sorry, I'm having a hard time reading the words on these clouds. Our four squadrons were called the 332nd Fighter Group but we were nicknamed the Red Tails because our, the tails on our airplanes were painted bright red. Did you win a lot of battles? asked Joshua. We did, son. Our biggest job was to protect the bomber planes from enemy fire, fighters that were trying to attack them as they flew. We did a really good job of it, too. So this would be a bomber and they're up there protecting it from other airplanes. We flew more than 1,500 missions and destroyed lots of enemy airplanes, supplies, and equipment. I remember one time we escorted American bombers all the way to Berlin, Germany, a round trip flight of 1,600 miles. Our ground crew worked all night long to get the planes ready for that mission. They even had to install special fuel tanks so that we would have enough gas to get there and back again. Everybody really worked together to make it successful. Looks like they're putting on the fuel tanks here. 
Did the Tuskegee Airmen fly bombers too? They did, Krista, but their last remaining, I'm sorry, but their training took longer than ours did. Before the African-American bomber crews had a chance to go overseas, the war ended. They fought lots of battles though, just as we did, against the rules that kept black people from doing things here in America. We're all Tuskegee Airmen. So even though they were helping the country, there were still rules that they couldn't do a lot of things in the country. There was still prejudice and segregation. So is Grandma a Tuskegee Airman too? asked Joshua. She sure is, Granddad responded. Everyone who took part in the program is a Tuskegee Airman. And is she a hero like you, Granddad, even though she didn't get any medals, Krista asked. Everybody who helped America win the war was a hero, honey. Some people fought American enemies in the battles overseas. Others fought for freedom at home. The Tuskegee Airmen proved that African Americans had the ability to be successful, not just as military pilots, but in all kinds of ways. They never gave up. They never stopped trying to be the best. That's what Grandma and I want you kids to do. I will promise the kids. And Granddad, we're really proud of you and Grandma and all the other Tuskegee Airmen. So that is an important part of our history. I hope it spurs you to read some more books about Tuskegee Airmen. Thanks for listening. See you next time.